Hello my friends and welcome to yet another Red Gaming Tech video with myself Amata where I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we are going to kick off proceedings with some Intel news. And before you ask, no this is nothing to do with Intel MDS or Zombie Load, Full discussed that vulnerability yesterday, so go check out our video from yesterday if you want to get the lowdown on what's going on with that. No, this is actually about the Open Source Technology Summit, which is an annual open source focused tech summit that Intel has hosted for about 16 years or so. Now you might be scratching your head going, okay, I don't remember hearing anything about this, you know, where has this been hiding for the last 16 years? Well, it's actually been event private and self-focused until now, and this year it was opened to event uh, industry partners, should I say, and the press, as well as customers as well. Now one of the things they unveiled at the OSTS was basically a new installer and storefront for the clear Linux distribution. And basically, for those of you wondering what that is as well, it is a quote, open source rolling and release Linux distribution optimized for performance and security from the cloud to the edge designed for customization and manageability. So according to Intel's System Software Products General Manager Imad Soso, the new Linux distro has a deep learning stack with AVX512 integration and support and a data analytics reference stack that, quote, was developed to help enterprises analyze, classify, recognize, and process large amounts of data built on Intel's the unscalable platforms using Apache Hadoop and Apache Spark. Now, there's a few other things discussed at the OSTS, of course, including the Modern FW initiative, which was intended to remove legacy code from firmware, Rust VMM, which is a more secure project undertaken with support from Amazon, Google, and Red Hat, and a bunch of other stuff that are intended for embedded platforms and industrial automation. Now, if you want more information on everything I had just discussed, there is a blog about this from Imad himself, and there's a bunch of information about the clear Linux distribution and everything I've discussed pretty much, so that is going to be linked for your perusal in the description below this video, so go check it out if you want more info. However, that's not the only Intel thing I have for you today. I also have yet another benchmark for an Intel 10th generation processor, this time on Sysoff Sandra. So we have an Intel Core i5-1035G1 being listed here, and as you can see on the screen, it's showing the clock speed at 1 gigahertz with 1 megabyte of L2 cache, and we see the score of 70.61. Now there is quite a bit of information on screen, as you can quite plainly see, including the 15 watt TDP, and it is apparently going to be an ice leak U processor that we're dealing with here. So yet again, a mobile one, but still nice to get more leaks and benchmarks and just a more complete picture in general of what Intel are up to when it comes to the 10th generation. But we actually have some news from AMD. And what do we actually have here? Well, we have a slide which has been posted by videocards.com from an AMD presentation and your shareholder meeting, and they confirmed some very important things. That being that we are going to be seeing the Ryzen 3000 desktop series, which of course is the 7nm1s and the 7nm Navi in Q3 of 2019. Now this does pretty much line up with the rumours that we've heard previously. So just to refresh your memory, the rumours at the moment is that we're going to be seeing it at Computex and E3 with product announcements and demos and so on and so forth, but the products won't actually be available until July and that lines up pretty nicely with Q3 2019. But what's more interesting here is some wording that I want to draw your attention to. As quoted by video cards, it reads from AMD, quote, in gaming we successfully returned turned to high-end market with the launch of our Radeon 7 GPU in February 2019 and we are on track to introduce our next generation Navi GPUs for the mainstream market later this year. So very very interesting wording there because they refer to the Radeon 7 as high-end and Navi as mainstream. Now what does this actually mean, I hear you ask? Well, it means that probably that dream round about Navi having RTX 2080 level of performance was, well, a load of old tosh, and the rumours that we have, were told about it having RTX 2070 level performance are probably more accurate, but uh, it's highly possible that I'm reading far, far too much into this. This is 
far from a confirmation. We should, of course, wait till Computex slash E3 uh, to know exactly what's going on. But their wording, I think, is very important. But let's wait and see what happens, shall we? But speaking of Ryzen, I have another thing to discuss for you as we have some information courtesy of Tom Apisak as he has posted some information for the Ryzen 5 3400G and Ryzen 3 3200G. And as you can see on screen, he has posted for the 3400G a 4.2GHz boost and a 3.7GHz base, and then for the 3200G we see a 4GHz boost and a 3.6GHz base. And later on in the Twitter thread, he also mentioned 4 cores, 8 threads for the 3400G and 4 cores, 4 threads for the 3200G. And he also helpfully provided a link to the Sysoff Sandra page where you can see this information. So pretty much hot on the heels of the confirmation that yes, we are going to be getting Ryzen 3000 and RX Navi 7NM in Q3 of this year, we get yet more rumours about the core count and of course the clock speed of the Ryzen 3000G processors. Of course, again, take this all with a pinch of salt, but Tom does have a pretty good track record of being fairly accurate. So let's move over to Micron now. As they have absolutely smashed a DDR4 overclocking world record and they have beaten a data's record just yesterday by a fairly considerable margin. Now, a data's record was 5634 megahertz and Micron's new result is 5726. And that is a margin of 92 megahertz, which is significant when you're talking about speeds this high, of course. Now, for those of you wondering how was this actually achieved, well, it was accomplished with a single stick of Ballistics Elite DDR4 3600 on a ASUS motherboard with an i7-8086K, and yes, there was liquid nitrogen involved as well. Not exactly surprising when you're talking about extreme overclocking. And I know some of you are wondering, okay, what about the timings they actually had? Well, they configured the timings to CL24, 31, 31, 63, and basically just let the memory do the rest. So, just a very impressive results from Micron, and well done to them for crushing the world record. So, let's finish up proceedings today with a touch of gaming news with Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls, and of course Detroit Become Human. So, you may recall not too long ago that we got the confirmation that these three previously Sony exclusive games, of course from the infamous creator David Cage, would be making their way to the PC. Of course, Detroit Become Human has not been out that long, really, but Heavy Rain and Beyond have been out for quite a some time, and unfortunately have been Sony exclusive until now. And now we actually have the release date for the PC version of these games. So, what do we actually have? Well, Heavy Rain is going to release on July, sorry, June the 24th on PC, shortly followed by Beyond Two Souls on July 27th. And unfortunately, we don't have an exact release date for Detroit Become Human. We only have a release window of fall 2019. Now, I'd expect that to kind of come in the sort of pre-Christmas period, October-ish is my going, my sort of rough guesstimate as to when we'll see that come out, because again, that is a fairly new game, and it would make sense for them to release it just before the Christmas rush. The other two, of course, been out for quite some time. So, what's also pretty cool is that we're going to be seeing free demos for all of these games, so if you want to see how they run, all that sort of stuff, you can check them out for free um, on the Epic Games Store, as of course they are going to be exclusive. So... I know a lot of people are not going to play this just out of principle of the Epic Games Store thing. I'm not really going to get into that topic in this particular segment. It's not what it's about. But I think it's pretty cool these games are coming to PC. Detroit was highly flawed, but it had some... Um, well, it had it had Connor. Really. Connor is genuinely a really cool character. And it had some interesting ideas that unfortunately did get David Cage massively. Um, but I'm still pleased to see these games come into PC, even if they are exclusive to a platform that I think is going to cause some controversy and a lot of people to not purchase it out of principle. But again, not what I'm here to discuss, but I'm curious how many of you are going to be checking these classic Cage games out. Love to see Fahrenheit as well, but uh, a girl can dream. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.